fellow South Africans, good people, I greet you all in the name of God. I will simply take you through the word of God and its meaning in our lives. God bless Africa. Nkosisikeleli Africa. God bless us all. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. That is why we all begin in national prayer and in everything that we do by praying to God and saying Nkosi Sigelela i Africa. God bless Africa. Malupaka nyeswe upondo luayo. May her glory be lifted high. Yizwa imitandazo ye tu. Hear our prayers. Unkosi sikelela. God bless us. Tina lusapolwayo. We, her children or family. Morena boloka se chabasa hesu. God protect our nation. O fe di se dintwa le matwenyeho. Banish all wars and hardships. Or end, intervene and end all conflicts. O se buluge. Protect us. O se buluge se chabasa heisu. Protect our nation. Sechaba sa South Africa. Protect South Africa. And one important aspect that any of you needs to understand. When the national anthem comes to the part where it says South Africa or South Africa out Eight the blow fan on the out of the blue of our skies. So you will understand that the national prayer, the first two parts of it, we are talking to God, and we have said what we want to say to God, and now the attention changes. It comes to South Africa. We have complied with the word of God that teaches us that for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. That's why we start and say, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. So we have our victory. We have overcome the world. And even our faith and we start with God. Now, I want you to understand 
the national anthem and its actual application or implication to your daily lives. We are saying now, South Africa, now I, I'm done talking to God. I said, Ngosi Sikelela, right? We are done, okay, God, we are done now. Now I focus my attention, I come to South Africa. South Africa. Hey, wait, South Africa. Out of the blues of our skies. All the beds, everything that is on the skies, you understand? Out of the depths of our seas. Now, you need to understand where I am calling you from. I'm calling everything. Eight the blow fan on the himmel. Eight the deep day fan on the War once ever rebirthes over our everlasting mountains. Var the grandse and vortrie. Where the cliffs gives answer. Some other interpretation is where it says where the echoing cracks resound. What you are saying here is very deep. What you are saying here, you are calling all the forces of our country, everything in it, in the skies, in the depths of our seas. You are calling it. When you sound the call to come together and united, you see these fingers, they, 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 they are in, in this whole place that you are calling. And you are calling them to come together and united they shall stand. They, they, they will be standing like this. You cannot move them. They will be standing like this, united. And let us live and enjoy freedom. You do what you must do. You do what you must do. I do what I must do. I do what I must do. And respectively so. We live together and enjoy freedom. But we are standing united. In everything that we do. I am not selling you out. You are not selling me out. It is what we are understanding when we call and say, Said Africa. Aid the blow fun. You understand. You need to understand this. So now, what you did in the past, what you have done in the past, was to literally say to God that you want to live and struggle for freedom. The term strive, it means to struggle. You want to live and struggle for freedom in South Africa, our land. And because God is good all the time, God allowed you to struggle for freedom in South Africa, our land. Today, we change that. Today, we understand the reality of Bethesda. Today, I say to you, all of you, you are healed. <sighs> you are all healed. <sighs> you will now live and enjoy freedom in the universe, our home. The Bible confirms this. In 1 John chapter 5 and says, Whosoever believe that Jesus is the Christ is born of God and everyone that loveth him that begat 
loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the son of God good people I will tell you about the healing at the pool of Sabbath on the Sabbath after this there was a feast of Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called in Hebrew tongue Bethesda having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of important folk of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain say, season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case. He saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The important man answered him, Say, I have no man. When the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day, was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. You cannot work on Sabbath. He answered them, He that made me woe the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed wist not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. After Jesus findeth him in the temple, and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. 
the man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews prosecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done those things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Jesus is equal with God, good people. <laughs> you must understand the truth. And the reality of this truth is in your understanding. When you understand this particular truth, when you understand that the five porches, it means the five doors. In Second Timothy verse 1, 10, chapter 1 verse 10, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus, who hath ab abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. I do not know that I've ever had a comprehensive sermon at the beginning of the fifth chapter of John, Many I have mentioned in passing or make a quick reference to it, but a detailed explanation of it has always appeared to be problematic because it is the prelude to the beautiful discourse Jesus gives about the new birth. John chapter 5 at verse 25, followed by the equality important. The important man, this man was important, but he was laying there for 38 years. And when this word cometh to me, Sylvester Volani Mangolele, you would understand it to be true that I'm 38 years of age. It is not a lie. And I will explain this to you such that you understand it explicitly clear as to what is it that one is saying to you. In, 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 in John, in chapter 5, verse 28, it says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and at 29 and shall come forth that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of demarcation. good people marvel not at this as if it it's not some incredible marvelous miraculous thing that a person did dead in trespasses and in sin caught the death of Adam trapped in total depravity and dead to the thing of God is brought to life in an instant with the regenerating power behind the voice of the Son of God. How can I not marvel at that? But the word of God says marvel not. So the prelude of this beautiful discourse must be important. Let's look at the details of the ship pool and the five porches at Bethesda. Five porches. 
And we know that five is the number of death. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> so, it's clear what is represented on the surface. But the rest of the story is going to take some rightly dividing. I believe this in, in this event happened as recorded. Jesus saw this man in this location, healed him, and met him again later at the temple. But the details are so particular, we must see more in it than what appears out of first reading. John devoted much space in, this, in his writing to this event. It must have greater significance. And I want to tell you, Bethesda, in the Bible is mentioned only once. <laughs> and uh, it is where the important people went. Important. But blind crippled sick of all death and it had five doors five doors the number five it represents death everything that you have I kill every disease that you have I heal when you sit and listen to me when I tell you that I'm a man of God, I tell it to you straight. I am a man of God. I am the five doors. When I say I am going to end corruption or I'm ending corruption, I kill corruption with five doors. Let us go back to the word of the Lord. John 5 at the in first instance he says after there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem Jesus left the feast went to Jerusalem and then uh, in chapter 2 Jesus goes to the Passover the next feast on the calendar is the feast of weeks or Pentecost Pentecost is fitting because it's moving in the spirit is depicted because a moving of the spirit is depicted now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda having five porches archaeologists and biblical scholars for years have tried to locate this mysterious pool. The best estimates were of a pool near Galilee. They are taking was that John meant to say Bethesda but, and not Bethesda. Some suggested John meant the pool of Siloam or the modern day site called the fountain of the Virgin of in the Kingdom Valley in the Kindron Valley. Excavations in 1964 in the Jerusalem have uncovered a pool matching John's very description. And this pool had history. And it, 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 I, I would want to enter into its history. I've studied its history. I understand that the church was built on top of the pool. That church was destroyed. And then that particular pool is 13 meters deep. And it is two pools divided into but into one. The one is upper pool. The other one is a lower pool. That is the pool of Bethesda. You understand that the, 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 there is rich history in there. And during the whitewash, whitewash is another era in the Bible that came, which we will talk about some other time. Things were changed to be the other way that they were not meant to be. And that's why we are asking where are the pots and we could find that the pots are doing things that cannot be done for the doing. You will understand that 
Archaeological discovery proved beyond a doubt that the description of this pool in the Gospel of John was not the creation of the evangelist. It reflected an accurate and detailed knowledge of the site. The Gospel speaks of the name of the pool Bethesda, its location near the ship gate, the fact that it has five porticos with rushing water all these details are corroborated through literary and archaeological evidence affirming the historical accuracy of the Johanne account. Bethesda, the house of mercy, the house of grace, consider for a moment for 19th century. Men have questions questioned what was written by the apostle discarding his account and more importantly the inspiration of the scriptures themselves if john couldn't be trusted here to give an accurate description of a physical location he actually saw and knew how can he be trusted for those why that matter of spirituality but more importantly how much more confidence do we now place on scriptures seeing new proof 1900 years later that the writers were true and accurate and honest in their reporting because in John 3 I mean John chapter 5 in verse 3 In these lay a great multitude of important folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. This certainly describes our early condition in the world born again, yet lacking the knowledge and understanding of the gospel and its good news. Because at verse 4, for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had because of the five, because of the symbol of killing. Whatever you are heavy. So now you will understand. When I tell you, <laughs> Papa Ote, as stated at the outset, I have no difficulty believing an angel periodically came down and troubled the water. But now we are seeing a larger picture by the greatest preacher ever, the Lord himself, symbolically. Perhaps this angel represents the gospel minister. Perhaps it represents you. Perhaps it represents me. Who is later called by the term and the troubling of the water is the impact the preaching has on a troubled soul. Do you understand? L l let me make it clear to you. The Lord himself symbolically. Perhaps this angel represents the gospel minister. You understand? Who is later called by the term? And the troubling of the water is the impact the preaching has on a troubled soul. You cannot be healed when the water is still. A child of God seeking grace and filled with fear can be troubled by the gospel when it is stayed. 
this water in a sense is linked unto the water in the Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26 when we recall and in 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse uh, verse 5 I mean verse 2 I am troubled Preach the word. Be instant in season. Out of season. Reprove. Rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Season. <laughs> Good people. A season. Being in season and filled with the spirit of God. A gospel minister can indeed trouble the waters. Stirring up the pure mind and using the word of God to convict men of sin, to rebuke, reprove, correct, and instruct men in righteousness. As in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. In John 5, where we started originally, at verse 5, And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. Whenever the scripture speaks of a certain man, it usually speaks of an elect child of God. It's not speaking of all men. Whenever scripture speaks of a certain man, it speaks of an elect child of God. Here is a man in this condition for 38 years. For 38 years we have lived and strived or struggled or attempted for freedom in South Africa, our land. For 38 years it has been like that ever since I have been alive. I am 38 years of age right now. And I will tell you in my 38 years, my birthday was at the place of new beginnings. In Baltimore prison. When the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Revelations comes into play. And you must understand it to be true. I, I will break it down to you. So that you understand. The word of God. And you understand how God. Is good. For 38 years. Why not just say 40 or 42 or whatever? Why not just report the event as a long time? Why mention the age 38 instead of being specific? Because numbers in scripture have meaning. Separately, the number 30 represents redemption and the number eight <laughs> represent new beginnings and thanks to the intervention of Jesus our certain man misses the case of 39 I was not arrested at the age of 39 I was I did not spend my birthday at the age of 39 at the place of new beginnings. I was asking myself, "Eh, hey, but God, why, Lord? Why, Lord, am I in jail on my 38th birthday?" 
<laughs> you don't know how God is good or how good God is. You don't know. Let me let me let, let me tell it to you the way it is. Nkosi Sikeleli Africa. Don't 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 get lost. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time, in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? If there's anything here to point us to a timely application, it's this in sentence. When Jesus saw him lie, and he knew that he had been now a long time in that case, it may be the case that I am being in, it may be the case of living and struggling for freedom, but in this case, I'm a man of God, don't mess with me. In this case, have said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? And this becomes the point, the intersection, where we must make a choice, a discretion, a choice of direction. Do you want to live and struggle for freedom? Do you want to live and enjoy freedom? I struggled for 38 years at Bethesda. I saw everything. I saw people being healed. I saw people receiving their blessings. I saw people being made whole in front of me. Everybody would be coming and laughing at me. They laughed at me, people. They laughed at me, but ha! But they laughed at me. They laughed at me, saying, "Ha! He's asking us money." They laughed at me. They lack understanding. On the left, we can turn our application of this story eternal. But quickly see that the road is filled with potholes, ditches, impediments, and spiritual difficulties. Hey, we must do this talking. We must do that. It's a long process. We must do that. We must do that. It must further be done. Because we know of a certainty that the regeneration the new birth, the act of imparting eternal life is irresistible and man is completely passive and inactive in that action and that he is never asked or invited to participate, then we must turn to the right and make this timely application. You have a choice. <laughs> You live and enjoy freedom. You live and struggle for freedom. To enjoy freedom has its responsibilities. It has its pitfalls. It has its ditches. It has its impediments. It has its commandment. In the greetings of John, at Second John, When John says, walking in truth and love, I rejoice greatly that I find, I found thy children walking in truth as we have received a commandment from the Father. You must walk in truth. In another greeting of John, Third John, chapter 2, chapter 1. 
the elder unto the well beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou may f mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren come, came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Wilt thou be made whole? Jesus asked. You stand as a babe. You stand as a child in God. Unable to walk in the light of the gospel. Instructions until such time as you have grown and been matured in the world. Think about your condition. Born again, yet unaware of the truth of the gospel. Without the knowledge of your condition, your situation and the awareness of the correction by God. You are still lame, undone, incomplete, halt. And blind and all defects to be sure but all have a life you come to Bethesda and be healed of all those fellow South Africans spiritually I am gifted spiritually I can do things that other people cannot do I walk with the truth of God. I am a man of God. I am not a hypocrite. I tell you right now that I do not have money. Here is the question that should generate clarity. Did Jesus ever heal any but his own children? The answer sends us to the conclusion that the man in question is one of God's elect. Remember when John said earlier, a certain man, an important man. Although the New Testament, that des descriptors comes to play in defining the elect. At verse 7 in, jo in, the, in this chapter 5 that we've been reading. The important man answered. Say, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, other steps down before me. I have no man. While it is true in our eternal salvation, we have no man. No means no missionary, nothing but mercy, and the action of our Lord and Savior in time we need someone to proclaim the gospel unto us so that we can have life. And have it more abundantly. That is why I go to God. <coughs> Sorry. That is why I go to court. The house of the Lord. The house of the law. Because I defend the country and its people. Every person in the country. It's important to me. Bethesda. That's why when you come to me, I call you important people. You are a VIP. That's why many of my friends ask me, why don't you like being at VIP whereas you are a VIP? I say, people, me, I like general people because to me, they are very important. I am the five doors. I am the five doors. Nothing 
but mercy and the action of our Lord and Savior in time we need to proclaim the gospel unto us. Indeed, how can I understand except someone, men, some men guide me? How can I? Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. When we are told to do something in the scriptures, it is for our benefit. It's because we are already have life. And it is going to result in a blessing. We can only rise up and walk because God has given us life. We can only rise up and walk because his word, his holy scripture, has given us the light by which to go. Take your bed and walk. Take up your bed and walk. In Psalm 119, The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Take your bed and walk. Take your bed and walk. In John chapter 5 verse 9 and immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. My brothers, at verse 28 to 28, 27 to 28, of Mark, and he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for men, and not men for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. There exist today entire religious groups who have made the Sabbath their cornerstone. It is the linchpin of their doctrine and the defining statement of their faith. They have placed the Sabbath and its priority above the worship of God. Our true Sabbath is fulfilled in Christ Jesus. And only in him will we find rest for our weak, wounded, and affection, affected souls. In John 10, in John 5, chapter 10, the Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. Thirty-eight years, the Jews knew this man was in a condition for a long time. Yet instead of rejoicing, they are more concerned about their own traditions. They love the appearance of law more than the law itself. Here is a man whose healing can only be attributed to God. There is no other answer. Yet, what is their concern? Rejoicing and giving God the glory? No. Placing the Sabbath above the worship of God? In John 11, verse 11, he answered them. 
He that made me whole the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. <laughs> then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed was not who it was. It was for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. We get a glimpse of Jesus in service on the day we meet to worship and find rest. He travels amongst us through the multitude. And in our natural mind we'll complain about the little flock the small gatherings of saints, if only we would put aside the seeming comfort of large crowds and appreciate it's easier to see Jesus in a smaller group. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, let a worse thing lest the worst thing come unto thee. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come unto thee. The good news of the gospel is has led this man to this temple to praise God and seek the one who had saved him from his condition. For some 38 years, this one has been kept from this temple not only by his condition but by the law itself. <laughs> when you look at Leviticus verse 21 and 2, uh, Second Sam at chapter at, uh, 5. The law is what kept me in this place. Now Jesus finds him and explains the danger of sin. Isn't that one of the things we do in the church? Encourage one another and help each other to stay away from sin. Primitive baptism doesn't often talk about the marks of sin and what it does to the body. We are quick to give heredity and even the devil credit for our illness, but many times there is an unconfessed sin that plows us and hinders us. The wages of sin is death. Because when you sit and concentrate on sin, you die. And when you die, you cannot run the race set before you. When you die, you cannot do what must be done. Look at this. Sin, when it is finished, brightens forth death. It stands to reason, therefore, that before it is finished, it brings forth illness. That's logical, isn't it? <laughs> Sometimes it may be a way of slow illness, but it is also one of the marks we find upon God's elect children. We see the bad news in illness yet rejoice in the good news that they are suffering marks them as children of the Most High. Today we say to God, let us live and enjoy freedom in the universe, our home. After we have sinned, to say to God, let us live and struggle for freedom in South Africa, our land. Sin is no more. Lest the worst thing come unto thee. Sin no more. 
unless the worst thing come unto thee. Sin no more. Several times during the New Testament, we are told to sin no more. That's hard to hear, even harder to do. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. In every aspect of eternal life, Jesus introduces himself, but the work of the gospel minister is to proclaim Jesus. The gospel minister becomes a witness to your soul, and the Spirit of God within you confirms in our story. Jesus didn't say who he was, nor have we recorded of the man asking, perhaps, Inwardly, it was revealed to him who Jesus was. He has the irony of sin in the flesh. A man healed of a lifelong infirmity 38 years. On the very same day, he is released from his bonds and in, is allowed to walk, run, move about without pain or difficulty. He spends little time in rejoicing. He's more concerned about pleasing the Jews. He returns again. He turns against against Jesus and reports him by name as if he had committed some great crime. Hmm. Isn't that our gratitude for blessings as well? Don't we immediately turn back to the flesh instead of thanking God? Many of you are immediately looking at the blessings. So Mangolele will be blessed with money and then thereafter money. I'm not worried about money, good people. I'm worried about togetherness. Money flows. You have it today, you don't have it today. It is like that. Remember that. Remember that God is your creator. And when you were created, there was no money. You understand what I'm saying. So the reality is that Money is something that you find here and money is something that you will live here. Your relationship with God is the most important thing in this world. And your victories happen every day. And you must confess your victories. It is not that I did not change the national anthem. I have changed the national anthem. Now, Many of you are saying in prayer, let us live and enjoy freedom in the universe, our home. You are saying that. You are teaching your young to say that. You are doing that because it is good. It is the word of God because you know that God is good all the time. That is victory. Not the monies that are going to come after court. No. No. That is victory. This is victory. This video right now is victory. I am making it out of nothing only through the mercy and glory and grace of God. God is good, people. Don't we immediately turn back into the flesh instead of thanking God? Remember the ten lepers Jesus cleansed. Only one turned back to give glory to God. Only one. Are you that one? <laughs> and therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. That's when the persecution started persecution not pro -se 
Kushin. When you follow the text of the Bible, when you follow the history of the Bible, the first blood to drop was not in the cross. It was during the persecution. Follow the persecution of Jesus. Follow the persecution of Sylvester Volane Madala. Follow that persecution and understand the third day. <laughs> the third day. Don't want to calculate Friday when he was prosecuted and then waking up on Sunday when he wakes up to be from Friday to Sunday is the third day and try and make a, a, no, 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 don't do it. Follow the persecution. Somebody say Amen. <laughs> God is good. Uh, if I am boring you, you have the right to switch off this video, but let us continue with those ones that are understanding the word of God. Healing on the Sabbath day, worthy of death, incredible. Let us hear the whole matter now. What purpose is the gospel? It's not to bring eternal life. The life-giving voice of the Son of God does that. It doesn't give life. But the gospel does allow one to learn and understand what has happened to him. And teaches him why he now has spiritual mind. It comforts him to find that others in the church also have this eternal struggle Paul describes in Romans. Wilt thou be made whole? It is not an offer of eternal life. In this lifetime we can only be whole through service to God. We can only find ourselves healed from our ignorance by saving the Lord in his church. His church being your body. His church being your words. His church being your thoughts. His church being you. In Luke chapter 17. It is written that the kingdom of God is in you. You must understand it to be true. That whenever you do things in the name of God, all things come to pass. Good people, I ask you to assist wherever that you can assist to make the seventh day of December 2021 a success and I am currently in need of your assistance in relation to saving the documents any of you who are able to assist please assist in this particular regard by sending any amount that you can afford to spare into my cell phone number 084-835-9161 or Capitec account number 134-478083. The phone number is 084-835-9161. Capitec account number is 134-738. 78083. Any little that you can afford to spare will be highly appreciated in that regard. 
let us continue to say to God in national prayer, sound the call to come together, and united we shall stand. Let us live and enjoy freedom in the universe, our home. Papa, Ote, God bless you. Thank mm-hmm. you.